Thank you for joining us. This certainly is an unprecedented time in history with three life-changing disasters, one after the other. First, the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic, then the economic crisis it caused. And now, on top of all of this, we see protests and riots ignited by the atrocious murder of George Floyd. My friend, Dr. Alvida King, reminded us of the words of her uncle, Martin Luther King, who said, we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters or perish together as fools. There's so much pandering going on and lies by omission, yet some people who have the courage to say what they really think. This is a time in which we should stand together to address and solve health, economic and social emergencies. And today we'll talk about these concerns and also about rising anti-Semitism. Our guests are Bernie Marcus, the founder of Home Depot, and Bill Falloon, the co-founder of Life Extension, who will share their thoughts on these subjects following these messages. A question I often get asked is why should young people care about the spread of coronavirus? Well, we know that people with underlying medical conditions over the age of 60 are at highest risk, but they've got to get it from somebody. Social distancing is really physical separation of people it's what we refer to when we ask people to say at least six feet apart. Not going to bars, not going to restaurants, not going to theaters where there are a lot of people. It all just means physical separation so that you have a space between you and others who might actually be infected or infect you. We all have a role to play in preventing person-to-person -person spread of this disease, which can be deadly for vulnerable groups. For more information on how you can social distance, please go to coronavirus.gov. Life Extension Magazine brings you new discoveries in health and anti-aging. Our science-based research and supplements are so advanced, they're many years ahead of the medical mainstream with quality control standards that exceed FDA mandates. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. Joining us now is Bernie Marcus and Bill Falloon. It's such a pleasure and honor to have you back on the show, Bernie. What a very, very odd year 2020 is. What are your thoughts with regard to the new challenges facing humanity in general and from your perspective, Bernie? We live in an age that uh, is very frightening. Uh, I am telling you free speech. Free speech is now under attack. Every, insidiously, every day. I watch, I watch people being forced off a of board of directors because they support an opposite party. I've seen people who have, because they, they've allowed an article to be printed that isn't politically correct, having to give up their life's work and be out of work. This is scary stuff. This is frightening. I don't remember times like this. I really don't, honestly. And now the power of this, these groups of people has gotten so strong that they really can stifle anybody and they are trying to do it. Terrifying, yes. And Jews, unfortunately, are the great supporters of this. And they are gonna, as I said before, that they're going to suffer the consequences before anybody else does. Jews always suffer the consequences before anybody because they're an easy target. It's simple. And people have a, a kind of a built-in thing about anti-Semitism. It's built into many people. I think that people in the United States are pretty good about this. But there's a whole group of people that don't believe this. We also have to worry about our college students. They're being indoctrinated in the schools, in the universities today. They're being taught by professors who teach them that they're worthless because of how they were born. They're worthless because what they believe in. They're worthless because they, 
they pray to God, and uh, by four years, they work them over to a point where they no longer believe all those things. And we saw that. We saw that young kids uh, laying down on the ground who are college students uh, apologizing for that, who they are and the color of their skin. It's kind of amazing. I don't remember this before. I've never seen it to this extent. I lived in a period when I could get into medical school. Uh, I wanted to be a doctor from the time I was 13 years of age. And I wanted to be a doctor. And um, I knew every organ in the body, all the bones in the body by the time I was 15 years of age. And I took pre-med. I was a very good student. I couldn't get into a medical school because they had a 10% quota, a 10% quota on every medical school in the United States. By the way, they had it on dentistry as well, on podiatry, chiropractic. Jews were not allowed in any of those. 10% were all not allowed. That means if you had money, you could go to medical school. We didn't have any money, therefore I didn't go to medical school. In addition, in those eras, I'm talking about the 50s and the 60s, if you went to any company in America, there were no Jews working there. There were no Jews. And, and certainly in top management, there were never any Jews. But if you looked in, inside, in the accounting department, the law firms, uh, there were no Jews. There were no Jews in the banking industry. That's why Jews developed their own banks, like Bear Stearns and, and uh, uh, the other ones that came along. That's why Joe Flom started his own law firm because he couldn't get into one of the other big firms because he was Jewish. So we saw this, we lived through it. And anybody who thinks that these days can't come back is wrong. They're over the horizon. They'll be here very shortly. If you don't think the way they want you to think, if you don't believe in what they believe in, you will be ostracized, you will be uh, destroyed and eliminated eventually. And so, I'm just telling the Jews of America today, uh, and I'm 91, I won't be here to see the end of this story, but I hope the end of this story is a better ending than what I predict and what I, th what I see now. I hope it's a story where Jews understand what they have accomplished in America, what they've done. If you look at how we have become so important in almost every area, in medicine, in the arts, in research, in uh, just creating jobs for people, uh, in philanthropy. The Jews have done a phenomenal job in America. Every university in the United States has Jewish names attached to it because Jews gave to those universities. The same universities where they're being taught anti-Semitism, anti-Israel, were really sponsored and being sponsored as we speak today. As we speak today, I see uh, Jews making $100 million contributions to universities where Jews are not comfortable, where Jewish students are really ostracized and, and penalized for being there. So we should be out there screaming about it. And in fact, we're involved with a process now uh, of having a Jewish month. It was uh, directed by the Congress, and I think it's May. And for the first time, we're gonna take advantage of it. And I think that every May you'll see more and more product put out there talking about Jewish accomplishments in the United States and how this has affected everybody's life. Look at what the Jews have done in the internet. In that whole system, every phone you hold, there is a Jewish part in it somewhere. And people have to understand the contribution of Jews, not only in the medical field where it's very, very, uh, in, in theater, in arts, in music, and across the board. So Jews, should be proud of what they're doing. And we should be screaming it from the rooftops and not have to hide uh, the fact that we're Jews. But we're important in the United States. We're important to everybody, not just Jews, but everybody. And everybody should ap appreciate what we've done. I'll give you an example. Did you know, and I'm sure many people don't know, the guy that really formed Sears Roebuck, you know that he made a lot of money and he gave up his job, he gave up his, what he was doing, and he started to build black schools all over the United States. In almost every state in rural South, they have schools that he built himself. He went down and he built it with his own hands.
That was what he did. And now we see some of these people vilifying the Jews. I don't understand this whole thing. Why would you do that? When the fact that a guy like him had so much to do with their education in the early years, and so many Jews are working for better education for the minorities, and not just the blacks, but the Hispanics as well. I think that Jews should not be ashamed of what they've accomplished. I'm proud of it. And Jews have marched in Selma, Alabama with Martin Luther King, helping start, in fact, the civil rights movement. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, Bernie, Bernie, I learned about the those Jewish quotas when I did an article about Jonas Salk. And I've spoken about Jonas Salk's in many of my lectures, where he was given inferior lab equipment. He was ostracized from the better medical laboratories. And he had to go there and develop the polio vaccine under those types of uh, harsh circumstances. And uh, so few people recognize what he had to go through to push that vaccine out the door fast and save tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands for being crippled permanently from polio. So that's a very good point that so few people remember. And, and history is something I like to bring up in my books and my articles in the magazine about how things used to be. They used to be pretty bad. And here I, I reside in Boca Raton like you do. I don't see any of that anti-Semitism, but in other parts of the country, obviously it is happening. And that's something that really should be addressed. What are your thoughts on this? I think that we don't, we don't brag enough about what we've done. We don't brag enough, and I'm talking about Jews, about we've, what we've accomplished and how important our role is in, in the United States and in the world. Well, go to Israel and you find out there's Jewish blood in almost every phone that you have in, in the world. Jews develop some kind of technique or some kind of research that helped make that phone possible. I don't think people understand that. I really don't. And so when somebody is an anti-Semite, uh, you just say to them, if we were able to cut off all the things that Jews have done, where would you be today? It's a contradiction in terms, really, because if people hate or people in other parts of the world, let's say, dislike the West and uh, so forth, it is actually blasphemous of them to use the product of Western creativity and Jewish creativity. If they don't like what we represent, they should not drive around in Cadillacs or use uh, polio vaccines and cell phones because these are the products as you, as you are just alluding to. Well, if you took it away from them, they would feel it. I mean, I, I, I sometimes think, think about uh, the Jewish, I know in Israel, they're working on very interesting concepts that have to do with COVID-19 and other diseases. And I, I sometimes said, what if you said they could only be used by people who are not anti-Semitic? <laughs> renounce anti-Semitism, <laughs> renounce hatred. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like how, where would it go? Uh, but we saw a break because there was a, um, I'm trying to think of what country it was, an Arab country, where he said that if the Jews develop a vaccine, if Israel develops a vaccine, I will use it and we will bring it to our country, in spite of the fact that we want to see Israel destroyed. <laughs> so the dichotomy is almost hard to believe. How crazy. It is, it is. Changing subjects yet again, what are your thoughts regarding the need to address the pandemic and health in general and having an open mind with regard to patients' right to try. I read so many stories about successful Jewish people. Some of these individuals I didn't even know existed until they died. Like Dr. Starzl, he is the father of transplant medicine. He was uh, transplanting livers back in the early 1960s, underwent fierce uh, criticism for that. And I did a, a front page article about him just about six months ago in, in Life is Ancient Magazine to try to pay tribute to all the work he did, people threatening to indict him for murder because a lot of his first patients, of course, died. But if he didn't take those initial steps, people wouldn't be getting liver transplants, which saves 30 to 40,000 Americans every single year. But Bernie, you sound perfect. You had a chronic lung condition. You were chronically coughing. It was interfering with your ability to talk. And yet we've been talking now for over an hour and you're flawless. <laughs> you have no problems whatsoever. 
can you let us know what you did as far as identifying as an effective stem cell treatment? Yeah, I could tell you that 10 years ago, this would not have happened. I'd been coughing up during this entire thing uh, and almost choking. Uh, and it was getting worse by, by the day. And this condition is very prevalent in the United States today and all over the world. Uh, it's, it's a lung condition. And um, the doctors had no answer for it. Uh, they had, you know, let's try antibiotics for two years and destroy your body, your gastro system by taking antibiotics for two years and maybe it'll work. And I chose not to do that. And I have a, 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 a doctor um, who's a homeopathic doctor. He's integrative medicine. And by the way, he's now introduced it to Jefferson Hospital, Jefferson University. It's called the Marcus Center. And he was a great believer in stem cells. And he said, Bernie, he said, I don't have an answer for you, but I, I know we've never used it in stem cells, but I can't understand why. Umbilical cord stem cells. And he said, there's a place in Panama that has this, and why don't you give it a shot? I went down there, and the relief was almost instantaneous, changed my life. And by the way, I still get stem cells on a continuous basis every year, and it allows me to function at the age of 91 today. And by the way, that's why they're using it on, for COVID-19, because the lungs are the first tissue to be affected. It's the lungs first, the heart second. And if in fact, uh, the stem cells work on, on the lungs and prevent the COVID from continuing to get to the heart and destroy the heart, uh, people will live longer. And that's why it works. That's why we think it works in, in COVID-19. But having said that, um, again, I, I found that stem cells also work with autistic children. Uh, we found out that stem cells work on people with um, arthritis. And uh, we now have, a, we had a clinical trial a year ago where we did it with 15 universities around the country uh, doing it on arthritis in the knees, in the knees by injecting stem cells into the knees. That paper will be coming out shortly. And I think it'll show that many people don't have to have a knee replacement that in fact, stem cells work on the knees. So it, this is why I buy into stem cell. And, and this is why I, I fight. And by the way, the FDA approved those tests for the knees as well. So it's trying things that don't normally work. A lot of doctors believe, and you know this, they believe that only this works and you're not going to try anything else. They will not try anything else unless the protocol. And a lot of this comes about do you know why? Do you have a clue why? I'll tell you why. Liability. For the trial lawyers are out there waiting to pounce on them. And by the way, this is why the FDA doesn't approve a lot of drugs. But you notice every one costs $2 billion to $3 billion to put on the market today. You know, most of that money is covering their ass on liability because you know they're going to be sued. Sooner or later, you'll see it on TV. If you try this drug, we're gonna get a lot of money for you. And um, the trial lawyers have changed America and you don't see this in any country in the, in the world, anywhere else, because nobody else has trial lawyers the way we have them here in this country. And they, to me, a lot of the things you're talking about, the reason that doctors don't use it is because they're afraid to, because they will pounce on. God forbid the patient dies not from that drug or not from that homeopathic medicine, but dies for another reason, you're going to be sued by some shyster out there that's going to go after you and take everything that you've ever had in your life. And your, your house, your family, your wife, everything is going to be gone. And therefore, why should I try it? I'm not going to try it. It's crazy. Well, some good news, Bernie is our life extension group has established IRB approved clinical trials. And we have doctors around the country who are participating so that they're able to use some of these innovative therapies uh, to regenerate older people systemically. And we're able to use drugs like metformin and drugs like rapamycin 
and stem cell exosome stem cell therapies in the clinical trial setting that reduces the liability risk. We have institutional review board approval to do it, and we are doing it. We're seeing some remarkable results in our proof of concept studies. So we've been able to figure out a way to bypass some of those liability concerns. And for many people, they're able to get these treatments at virtually no cost. So we're assisting older people in rejuvenating themselves. And but, but your case history is remarkable. When you were 81, 82 years of age, you had a chronic lung condition. And we've been talking for over an hour and you have no problem whatsoever. That's an incredible testimony. Yeah. And if I talk to doctors and talk to doctors who are basically uh, pulmonologists and I tell them that uh, the reason I don't have that problem anymore is because I take stem cells, they all say the same thing. It's some other issue. You must have changed your diet. You're taking another drug that works. They just don't want to believe that it's stem cells. I, and I've talk, I can't tell you how many doctors I've talked to and I just give up Today, I don't talk to anybody about it. So you're, I'm, I'm happy you're doing what you're doing because somebody has to have a, an ability for people to go ahead with their work and somebody has to you know, cover their rear end, which is really the key thing here, and try. There are people who are willing to take a risk, uh, but not a risk of giving up their life work. I mean, they're not gonna do that. And I don't blame them. I really don't, I don't blame them. But if they have an R R IRB, and um, uh, it's shown to have no bad reactions and that its efficacy is, is good and um, uh, clinically can be used. I think it's wonderful and I think that you ought to continue doing your work. Keep doing it. I'll keep watching you, what you do. <laughs> Appreciate that. And it's really easy to do. We've got hundreds of thousands of people who belong to our group who want access to this. They're willing to sign waivers so they won't be suing any doctor. And we've got hundreds of doctors who want to practice this kind of innovative medicine. It's fun for them. They'd like to see patient results when every other doctor has failed. And then they're able to introduce multimodal therapies that enable those patients to recover in sometimes a meaningful way and sometimes just a small way. But either, either way, they're, they're getting an improvement that they otherwise would not have garnered access to. You'll be happy to know that, uh, that we have opened an integrative clinic in Pennsylvania at, again, I'm talking about Philadelphia, at Jefferson Hospital. And Jefferson Hospital is, has a program of integrative medicine that's taught the doctors the way they learn surgery and they learn everything else as part of the curriculum. And they have to learn integrative medicine. So some of the things you're doing uh, probably will pop up in the years to come. They're teaching doctors to think outside the envelope of, of looking for other ways to treat people and treating people with something that's proven, that's out there in the market, or many herbs, Chinese medicines that they've been doing it for centuries uh, that have shown that they're effective. Um, they're, they're not afraid to use it now, uh, but they're, and they're being taught at, at Jefferson. And by the way, I will tell you that because of the success at Jefferson, a lot of universities have now approached Jefferson. They're very interested in teaching integrative medicine in their own medical schools. So people are not coming out with the minds that are so narrow, which they have for years. This is what you do. You don't push it. This is what you have to do. This is the only way to go. They're now learning that there are other ways and maybe listen and, and try to create something on your own. I'll give you a perfect example of sepsis, which is a deadly disease, uh, which has been around how many years? God, everybody. Forever. For, forever, and the death rate for sepsis is very high. It's 45 to 50% of people. If you go in a hospital emergency room with sepsis, the odds are 50% you're gonna die uh, and there's no, nothing to use. Vitamin C, some doctor noticed, noticed that it looked like scurvy to him. And he said, my God, it has some sim it has symbolism of, of scurvy and maybe vitamin C will work. And he tried it on, a, on his patients. He was an emergency room trauma a doctor in South Carolina. And he, he had a patient, a patient who he knew was dead. This pa they tried everything on this patient. This patient was gonna die. And he said, let's infuse him with vitamin C, high dose of vitamin C. 
And he went home that night and he knew the next day he came in, he was gonna find out the patient died. Next day he came in, the patient was not only alive, but he was alive and well, and left the hospital later on that, that day uh, in perfect shape. And he said, oh my God, it, vitamin C worked on it. So he started to use vitamin C. He's the one that sold it to me. Uh, but he was the only doctor in his hospital that did it. So if you got into his hospital and you happen to catch him, you, you probably had a better chance of living than one of his other doctors. But we did a clinical trial on it and the paper will be out very shortly and it cut it down. I think it shows something like from 45%, it went down to 20 or 25%. So they only saw you save half the amount of people. How bad is that? It's incredible. We published an article about two and a half years ago with Dr. Merrick. He's doing work with that at another hospital with vitamin C, vitamin B1, and low-dose hydrocortisone. And he's been getting tremendous results with that. And they've had a challenge repeating that at other medical institutions. And it's probably because they're just simply not doing it right. So as you mentioned, it's that doctor with special talent that you want access to. It's not the building, it's the doctor inside. It's gonna mean the difference between life and death. And by the way, I'm gonna reach out to your Jefferson College, try to get a list of the graduates so that we can refer our members to those kind of doctors. Because I didn't know up until this interview that you had that kind of university program going. I think it's spectacular. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's called the Marcus Integrative Medicine Clinic. And if you live in Pennsylvania, that's where you wanna go. Well, our people will fly anywhere to a proper clinic. The one that's teaching it is called George Zabrecki, and he's, he's the guru in this whole area. And is the clinical trials, I can't tell you how many clinical trials we're doing now. We, that, that one I just gave you uh, of sepsis came out of George Zabrecki. And uh, not only that, we work with the NIH on this, by the way. There's somebody at the NIH is a great believer in it. It's been giving us the protocols and helping us to develop the protocols. I, they, there, are whole, there are groups of people, and I hope, I hope with George's classes and what's happening at, at Jefferson, that there'll be more in the years to come, Not so, so that you'll have a very large collection of doctors out there that hopefully will be uh, more apt to look at over the horizon for other cures that may be very, very effective, like the ones you're talking about. Tremendous. I'll be reaching out to Dr. DeBrecki after this interview. Okay. All right. Good. Gentlemen, it is absolutely inspiring that we have the honor of having you, Bernie and Bill, discussing this very essential subject right now. And I hope our audience will not only see this once on the air on the local ABC station and elsewhere, but we'll broadcast it several times. I want to thank you both very, very much for being with us today. Well, thank, thank you, you for Richard. inviting us. Thank you, Richard. Life Extension has covered groundbreaking medical research for more than 35 years. For your health and future, you deserve the best. Learn more at lifeextension.com. This concludes our special show from On Location in South Florida. I'm Richard Peretz, wishing all of you the very best. Mm -hmm.